of Joseph and I and our daughter Rachel was an infant when we moved here in 1976. And it was a very edgy, dodgy neighborhood. <laughs> you couldn't leave your car uh, <laughs> on the street <laughs> without uh, it being vandalized <laughs> like every other day. <laughs> um, cars were set on fire. The gas cap was always being stolen. The window was cracked. One morning I looked out at the car to <laughs> see if it was still there. And I remember looking at the car thinking, hmm, <laughs> it's in a funny position. <laughs> Ran out and the car, not only had they taken the tires, but they had taken the wheels. We couldn't get a, a home improvement loan because the area was redlined. It was that edgy, that dodgy, that the banks would not take a risk on giving us um, a loan for improving the house which it desperately needed. There was no plumbing here, no heating. Um, we had to have a new sewer line put in or sewer connection. And um, uh, the kids who had called this their um, clubhouse, you know, they had set fire in the house where the floorboards were all broken up in the kitchen. And some of the walls were battered in by baseball bats and that kind of thing. Um, that's the way the neighborhood was. In 2002, and I wish I still had the original letter that I received in the mail, in January 2002, that's about the approximate time, that I received a letter from a developer who had these big plans to tear down 460 Union Street, which is a Civil War era building, um, and beautiful to this day, I'm giving away the end of the story. <laughs> so the plan was uh, to tear down the building and put up this piece of garbage condo out of, you know, cheap old materials. You know, you can't fool me. I don't care what your plans are, you know. I know it's going to not be real. So um, I said, oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not going to let this happen. And I really, I went... A little bananas yeah. and I went door to door with petitions asking people to sign petitions to save 460 Union Street and and I made, went around also I made maps of the neighborhood because the developer claimed that this was uh, there was a lot of vacant space underutilized and nobody lives here and you know it's da, 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 da. every three to four months at the Board of Standards and Appeals there was a hearing about 460 Union Street and we stood our ground, we defended the five points that the, um, that the developer would have to um, make in order to get the variance um, cleared by the, by the Board of Standards and Appeals. And uh, we made such a good case for ourselves that after two bloody years of, you know, every three, four months, giving oral testimony and written testimony at the Board of Standards and Appeals on February 3rd, 2004. Board of Standards and Appeals denied the application for the variance for the, for the building to be torn down. This was a total victory for this community. And it, it also gives, shows the power and the strength that ordinary citizens can have when they, when they fight. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. It's a fight. Yeah. It's a fight for, for how you feel about where you live. And that's all I'm trying to do. Because there's always a battle for Brooklyn. It's just on every front, on every doorstep, on every block. Somebody's trying to take a, away a piece of your heritage, of your culture, of your history. It's strange to me that this is the way our culture and our society has come to that point. Why? I, I have no idea why this. I know that you are one of the founders of Frog, which is the yes. Friends and Residents of Greater Gowanus. Yes. So where did that come into play with the struggle over the building? Well, we would meet. We would meet in very ad hoc fashion. We would meet at somebody's office, at somebody else's kitchen table. Um, it happened, we were at my friend Margaret's in her loft on, on uh, Nevins and between Union and Sackett Street. And a bunch of us who were, you know, the, the diehards, the, the uh, 
pushers, uh, the people who went to the Board of Standards and Appeals to give testimony, we would gather there because there were always other issues. It wasn't just the Green Building. It wasn't just 460 Union Street. There was, you know, it came down the road. There was the Toll Brothers, um, 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 how should we call it? Um, uh, city planning, uh, Toll Brothers went to city planning to ask for a spot rezoning along the Gowanus Canal for their mega development. Um, there, we also, uh, many of us participated in what the, the uh, DEC called Team USA, which was, uh, the it called this Gowanus Stakeholders. And we would meet about the, um, the um, condition of the water quality of the Gowanus Canal. And thank goodness the feds stepped in in 2008 and nominated uh, Gowanus Canal uh, f to the national priorities list for toxic waterway. And then in uh, March of 2010, it, after the frogs campaign, <laughs> we had the biggest write-in campaign of any Superfund site in the entire USA. And this is truly a gift. This is a gift, considering the fact that this is the 21st century. We have a canal in our backyard that is sick, that needs to be remediated, that needs to be made well again. We all screamed uh, that week that the, that the Blades Foreman Lumber Co Building Company came down to, was demolished by Toll Brothers and Phillips family uh, at the bottom of 2nd Street at the canal's edge. The Blades Foreman Lumber Company building was a poured concrete building, um, as is the Coignette building. That's what it was uh, nominated for because of the way the building was formed. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, you know, we, all, we, we screamed and yelled, um, but of course it was too late because they did it Christmas week when everybody's not home, Landmarks Preservation, not home. Uh, um, and so there was nobody to um, protect this building, and um, it's it's gone, it's gone. And then Toll Brothers, uh, after Superfund designation for the canal, abandoned that site and um, and left town. So they got what they wanted, piecemeal, and then they tore the building down, and then they left town. Yeah, and took one of, the, you know, there's, this is a, an area, this is a community, a neighborhood, where there are very few landmarks. And so it's very painful when one of those disappears. And um, yeah, and that's, that's what I can say. You have to just pay attention around here, I'm, and everywhere in New York, because <laughs> Because things happen overnight, and when you're not looking, and when you're when you're asleep, you, you can't walk around with your eyes closed. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, where does the neighborhood stand as far as um, I know that you've got some some grants here? To talk yeah, about that. I'd love to talk about okay. those. <laughs> this is one one of my dreams coming true, actually, um, because back in the '80s when I when or late 70s, early 80s, I guess, I thought to myself, uh, this is, is a historic district for, because of the industry that we still have, and that was, that was here, and the history of the American Revolution, and, and all of that jazz. And so I, naive person that I am, I wrote to Washington asking for all the uh, directives, all the bulletins to um, nominate Gowanus Canal Corridor to the National Register as a historic district. <laughs> a very awesome task. <laughs> bigger, bigger than I could do. Working full time, mommy, wife, renovating, you know, whatever I was doing. It was beyond me. I, it was way over my head. Then, um, when the Army Corps, the United States Army Corps of Engineers, did their uh, survey in 2004 nominating Gowanus Canal Corridor to the National Register as a historic place, I said, hmm, hmm, 
something I could work with here. (laughs) And uh, so I uh, wondered about that for quite a while, I guess. And then I said, hey, this is sitting around here and nobody's pushing this. And then um, finally, uh, you know, I would do things. I would call the Army Corps people. I would call landmarks. I would push stuff to the Landmarks Preservation Commission for landmarking Gowanus. Well, I guess what really got me going full speed ahead, to use a cliche there, was in uh, 20, in, um, I guess it was October, November of 2010, Historic Districts Council had a competition called Six to Celebrate. So I said, hmm, I'm going to do this for Gowanus. I'm doing this. And I got to it, and I did it. <laughs> and I did a good job, I think. And a Historic Districts Council picked the project as one of the six to celebrate, and yay, 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 yay. That led me on the right path, and the right they, they helped in every way they could. And when I didn't know what to do, I'd say, what should I do next? Well, one day Frampton said, why don't you call the New York State Office of Parks and Historic Preservation? And I said, Frampton, I've argued with those people over and over again. They'll never listen to me. They'll never, it won't work. And I had to talk with myself. And I said, Linda, the only way you're going to get what you want is to do it. So I did. I called and invited the state people. They came. They, I gave them the tour. It, had, it was the first time they had come here, and they loved it. And um, they supported the project, and they said they would support the project, and that's how it all began. And of course, the Gowana stands for itself. I mean, that's really the basic reason the, that they're given the grants, is because they see what I see and, and honor that. And so this is a good thing. So then there was the Preservation League grant, which was wonderful. And I'll never forget Aaron Tobin saying, um, and I take great pride in this, saying that Linda's project was so strong that it could serve as a model for other communities in New York State. And that was like, what? Yeah, that is something I just, goes on in my head all the time and I feel great about that because it's getting the right thing done here and hopefully it will save more buildings from demolition and um and that's pretty much all I you know I just want it to be recognized for for all the goodness that it this area has the buildings the re adaptive reuse and and then there was the other grant from a private foundation which was also very um, fun indeed, giving those guys a tour. And they, when they came for the tour, they said they only have 20 minutes. I said, well, then we can't go on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> so between the good news of the, you know, the super fund and yes. we have grant money coming in, and hopefully this will be a New York City historic district. I hope so. I hope so, too. Um, how do you feel about... You know, some bad news is the uh, Whole Foods infringement. How I'm not worried. Yeah. I'm not worried because they don't belong here. And I think, um, yeah, they don't belong here. They don't belong next to a toxic waterway. Landmarks Preservation Commission has a real nerve. They are, should not be in the business of annexing part of a lot that has been landmarked to Whole Foods just because they've got, I don't know what, um, and so this is all wrong, but we've got a good campaign, a good fight going on now. Um, uh, we have an online um, petition that Historic Districts Council very kindly and very generously uh, put up on their website. And you know, people are signing on because um, they want Landmark Preservation Commission to do the right thing here. And, uh, but getting back to Whole Foods, they don't belong here with you know 65,000 cars a day come on this is a small urban neighborhood uh, it, it, we don't deserve that kind of treatment here whole foods also changes the neighborhood this is a small um, industrial neighborhood it is not commercial um, <clears throat> and uh, 
it puts the mom and pops out. We have a thriving uh, co-op in Park Slope, the uh, Park Slope Food Co-op. Um, and it's, it's the, the mom and pops, I mean, they have to survive. They're the people who live here. <laughs>